Everyone, this is Tim Pacho, president of the Liberty Advisor. And if you have not heard of sequence of return risk before, then you will definitely want to catch this four minute presentation that we have. And then we invite you to head over to sequenceofreturnrisk.com to download the entire 18 minute presentation. This is incredibly valuable information, especially if you recently just retired or if you're close to retirement. Again, you can head over to sequenceofreturnrisk.com to get the entire presentation. And just one more thing, this was recorded with my previous firm at Focal Point Wealth Management. I'm now with the Liberty Advisor. I'm the founder of the Liberty Advisor. So they're all great guys over at Focal Point, but I don't have any affiliation with them. So just wanted to clear that up in case you guys got some confusion and saw that in uh, any of the slides. But anyways, hope you guys enjoy, and I know you will find this to be incredibly valuable information. Thank you. Uh, but one thing I really want to talk about today, and what I want to scream at from the top of you know a roof and just shake people if I could to understand, is the concept of something called sequence of return risk. And what that is, is first I'll start off and give this example where this shows uh, person A and person B, and they both have the exact same returns except they're the mirror of one another. So they're just flipped, the inverse. So they average the same, and since they're accumulating funds, they both end up with the same amount of money 10 years later because they're not withdrawing any funds. So there's no sequence of return risk when you are accumulating funds. But however, when you start introducing losses into the equation, so let's say you go down 20%, you have to go back up 25 to get back to even. If you go down 50%, you have to go up 100% to get back to even. Uh, some more people are familiar with this concept, but what they're not as familiar with is let's say you're withdrawing 4%. So you've got a million dollars, you're taking $40,000 a year out to live on. If that's the case, if the market goes down 20%, you've got to go up 42% over the next three years to get back to even. So at 50, so if you go down 50%, uh, you actually have to go up 132% just to get back to even. Uh, so a lot of people are not aware of this. Uh, but and where this really comes into play is before I showed you what was happening when you're accumulating funds. Now this is what happens when you are uh, when you're taking distributions. So you've got uh, two people, they've got the exact same scenario going on. They're both taking $50,000 a year out. They both started with a million. Person, investor A had three bad years at the beginning of their retirement. Uh, and investor B had three bad years t uh, eight, eight, nine, ten 10 years later. And what you can see is investor A actually has $630,000 and investor B had 1.074 million, they both averaged the exact same return. And so what you, a lot of times what you don't see on CNBC, we don't really see anything good on there, but uh, <laughs> a lot of times, you know, or I call it CNBS, but uh, I'm gonna, uh, so, so a lot of people don't understand that, you know, no one can predict what the market's gonna look like the day they retire. And so if you retire and then all of a sudden you've got a bad year, if you didn't have an advisor that already proactively planned for that, you're you're probably in for some bad news because now this person that has six hundred thirty thousand dollars, you know, they're going to be in a rough spot or go out of, or go out of money. But now what I want to do is I want to give you a real life, real life example of how this has actually worked in the past. So this the source from this is Prudential and the Limber Fact Book. This is someone that started off with half a million dollars. They were withdrawing four point zero five percent, sixty percent stocks, forty percent bonds. And what I want to show you is that if some the person that started off with half a million dollars who retired in April of 1970, after 30 years, had a little over two and a half million dollars left. The person that retired just one year before them had a little over $500,000 left. And the person that retired four months before them ran out of money after 29 years. And this is, you see, there's a 16 month window here. And so a lot of times you see all these talking heads say, oh, well, you know, the market averages this, it averages that, but they never talk about sequence of return risk. I actually recently just bought sequenceofreturnrisk.com and I plan on giving this whole presentation out. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more, please head over to sequenceofreturnrisk.com. Thank you.